Yes, good evening. My name is Jeremy Whiting. I work in the, the, the middleware, the JBoss um, performance team at Red Hat. Um, I work in a team of um, five or six colleagues. We are located around the world. Uh, we concentrate on um, performance profiling, um, not only uh, the products that JBoss creates, but also the community projects as well. Because what we're doing is sometimes we find problems in product and so we go back to the community project, so back upstream. So eventually those changes will make their way down into product. The, um, I mean that's one of the things we do. We're, we're working on you know, various things, various products, but there's particular benchmarks that we use as well. Some we write our own internally, but also we work at uh, Work at contributing at SPEC, the Standardized Performance Evaluation Corporation. And that organization is made up of various people from different vendor companies, and we develop the next version of benchmarks, and also we're going to perform testing our, our products at our own companies to make sure that we're not introducing the issues. So those are the kind of things that we do, and we're also helping customers as well. So, uh, and the community, people in the community. So, people like yourselves. If you have problems, and you need to kind of discuss anything to do with um, Wildfly, say it's missing something, you want to see something else in terms of statistics. That's, that's a good situation where you kind of get in contact with us. We discuss whether it's actually something that's there already, or whether it's been introduced. So we can help you through that kind of process of improving the Wildfire application server. Okay. Um, so the, the agenda for this evening is um, to look at the following points. We're going to look at the, um, the reasons why you'd go about tuning uh, an application server and your applications. The method, some of the methodology, not going into too much detail, but um, providing you with references for you to dig deeper if you go to other places. Um, if you really want to find out how to do this practice of benchmarking day in, day out, it will just improve your you know, half hour stab at performance tuning that you have to do any week. We're going to look at some of the, the, the controls available in the application server. And we're going to then risk a demonstration, which <laughs> may go well, it, it may not, but we'll, we'll find out. Um, and then looking at you know, the bigger picture of um, tuning, you know, looking outside uh, the application server itself and kind of going bigger picture, uh, especially as we are in a, a kind of uh, times of where th you're not just working with one machine, you're working with clusters. You know, dynamic, scalable systems. And then finally we're going to wrap it up with a few questions and answers and details of where you can contact not just myself but also my colleagues in case of, okay, you don't answer, ask a question this evening but you can, you know, over the coming weeks, months, you can get in contact with us or directly. Okay, so these are some of the reasons for performance tuning. Uh, at your the organization you work in, um, you will be, you know, you'll have contractual obligations, service level, level agreements, and uh, user experiences which is, have, have, those have to be met, you know, response times with a certain number of seconds. And, you know, these sorts of things um, come from all different places. You have different parts in the organization. They have their own agenda as well. And it's those agendas which can make it very difficult for performance engineers to well, satisfy everyone. So you, if you're lucky, you've got a well-structured um, company. Um, the work comes in at the top and it gets funneled down um, rather than things coming in from left, right and centre and you have to deal with everything and everyone um, with a mix of priorities. Um, there's going to be things like operation per second. Some companies just purely want you know, transaction per second, raw you know, throughput, uh, or they want latency. Those are critical things which they're going to be 
expecting to see results of. And not only that, you're going to see there are aspects of what happens when things go wrong. How does your system perform when um, you, know, you get flooded by requests? What's going to happen? How does it, what does the business expect that? What do users expect to happen? How's it going to degrade you know, gracefully? And then also, yourself. You, you need to think about your credibility. When things go wrong, people are going to be you're going to be sat down in a room and somebody standing over you, pointing a finger. Um, hopefully this evening I can show you some basic things you can do in your, in your work um, in preparation for uh, those difficult times when people are asking difficult questions. You can show a little bit of preparation of what you've been doing uh, at work. That can certainly make you, so, make you look a lot better in the eyes of people. Um, and justify you know, what you've done in the past. So, performance benchmarking. It, there is a fantastic book uh, I can not recommend highly enough. It is a uh, job performance book. Um, it is written by Charlie Hunt and uh, Bino John. I think there's an ISBN number which I have somewhere. Uh, that that goes into great depth. It, that's the book to read. I would certainly recommend. You can find out about how they go about the practice, um, different aspects of a, a system, particularly an application server. For it. they've given uh, the, the examples they go through, kind of talks through um, taking out an open source application server and tuning that. Talks about the garbage collector. So how to take the tools which, which were shown earlier on, like JSTAT, JMAP. Uh, and the uh, uh, J Visual VM, um, like the previous uh, talker, take those tools and actually use those um, in a methodical way to actually kind of test your system, get the results that you want to see, and how to get to the point where you can see the results you want. Also, there's um, tools. There are lots of tools out there. So, the, uh, in the open source community, there are Canvas tools, um, some are more comprehensive, um, some are pretty particularly good at um, for teams such as the one I work in, in having uh, an environment where we can run results and then keep a catalogue of all our results and compare them if we wish to later on. But there's other systems like, uh, and that's that one in particular is called Fabian, uh, Fabian.org. Uh, that's probably more uh, aligned, uh, suitable for people who are doing this, you know, five days a week. It's, it's quite an in-depth tool. Um, how you construct benchmarks is a little involved. It's not very user-friendly, yes, but um, it's pretty good. Whereas if you wanted something which was a little bit more quick and off you go, um, Gatling is quite a good project. It's got a nice API which you can quickly get going with. You can construct a uh, Test uh, performance tests quite rapidly. Um, there's a product a project called Smart Frog that's also used at Red Hat by our QA and QE teams. They're very happy with that. They've they managed to get that working for them, and they have quite a rigorous kind of process as well in methodology of making sure that products we produce don't regress. Um, so that that suits their needs quite well. So I, I would recommend just taking a look at any of those. And one of the things that you should really um, concentrate uh, when you are benchmarking and testing is to test one thing at a time. It's very, um, very attractive to throw a few changes in at the same time. But when you come back later on, not just 10 minutes later or the end of the run, but the week after, the month after, if you haven't got some record of what you were changing and if you do multiple changes, then it very quickly gets clouded. And if you're a team of people as well, all doing their own tests, then you're going to have you can have problems. Of course, the, the doing one test at a time does mean you have to be, you know, as a human being, you're sitting there hitting the button and wait for the finish and you know, start the next one. Well, there are some tools which will allow you, you know, Fabian, for example, allows you to queue up runs. So once one completes it, then kicks off the next one. And 
to find out the collects those results. So you can schedule those overnight, <coughs> which is quite attractive because there are just not enough hours in the day when it comes to performance tuning. Um, and whilst you're testing, um, there are, I recommend observing the system. If you're just using a kind of local environment um, and you're developing, you want to test something, observe the system as it's being performance tested. So you can just get an idea of, kind of well, is this, is this looking right? Is there disk activity? Or is there CP activity? Is there network activity? And you get a feel for the hardware you're working with. You get a feel for the application you're working with. And that can um, particularly help, um, particularly when you need to start recognising when there's problems. Something's not quite working properly, the application's not working. Um, you can quickly recognise it before you get to the end of the run. Um, the yeah. Yeah. So, um, so when it comes to um, crafting a, a performance test, I would say I'd suggest writing a, a half page of a document. It doesn't have to be any more than that. You just write down the basic details of what you're trying to achieve here. Details of the hardware and what application is and what you're trying to achieve, and also when you're going to stop. You, know, you can keep on going on and on and waste a lot of time. But there's no point in um, going beyond what you, what you set out to achieve. So if you want to improve things by 10%, once you reach that, you always use this document, you come back to it later on. It reminds you of what you set out to do in the beginning. So you end up writing your driver, this is the code. Uh, to actually exercise your application, okay? And ideally, your, um, your driver, the, the framework that you, uh, your driver is running, is coded with, will also capture the response times, and also so it'll capture other sorts of metrics as well. It can also, you know, you, you're configuring different things. Ideally, you're not configuring the number of users. That would be something you can configure later on. Um, the tools which you, you use, will have different ways of, of computer setting that up. Um, some of the tools there, uh, for example, will also set up machines for you. So it'll start services, it'll re reload databases from you know, the file system, it'll collect some log files at the end of it, it'll start off particular tools on the system to capture metrics like CPU, disk activity and network activity. So depending on what, just how, how in-depth you want to get, you select a tool which will allow you to do all these sorts of things. And of course then you run your tests and then you're into the stage where you're checking for silly mistakes. Uh, I think it's some of the guys in the team, they, they set something up, they set the hardware and they, they get the performance run and the results look fantastic. They look you know, sub millisecond uh, across the board, all the operations, and you know, you need to start being a, but the more experienced you are, you start to get a little more skeptical. And it turns out that actually somebody got the URL wrong, and so it's just the service is serving up four or four pages. <laughs> so, as you, as you craft your um, benchmark uh, and your driver, you should really kind of build in um, several things like checking for errors, checking for mistakes. Um, that way, you, you're not going to be make, making these silly mistakes, and, and the, the tools as well. When you check for activity in certain log files, so you're looking for the recovery manager kicking in, and um, if you're doing transactions, then the recovery manager will be checking to make sure that those are, there's none that's failed for the last uh, timeout of that period, um, and, and rolling back or rolling forward transactions in your database. So you need to be checking those sorts of things. Um, and in particular, um, using those um, platform tools, I would uh, suggest you can quickly identify certain problems. There was, um, for example, there was a situation where we, where Red Hat was um, being compared to other vendors' software and their products. 
and we were asked to go up and come in and have a look at the system. It was not working as we were expected, expecting. And uh, going in uh, a customer site um, and ran a tool called DSTAT. That tool does um, give you second by second metrics of basic kind of CPU, disk activity, network activity. And just me using that tool for a, you know, while the tests were running, we immediately see that actually this application, what I was expecting to see in terms of kind of you know, activity on the system, it was just not right. And some investigation after that, in this half a day of looking around and investigating it, it turned out that there was a certain problem. But those tools, the DSTAT is one, for example, that's available not on not only on Linux, but also uh, Microsoft and uh, uh, Macs. Um, can give you a very quick overview, so, and it's got other little uh, features to it as well. You can switch on to use different flags to start spitting out more detailed information as well. Okay, so here we go. So this um, this is a um, quick diagram I made myself. I uh, it's, it really is just to show you the ideal situation. Uh, in a very simple way. Um, you've got requests coming in the top and they go through different layers, uh, sub parts of the subsystem in Wildfly. And it, each of those uh, layers, um, there are different um, technologies. There's thread pools, there's being instance pools, those sorts of things you'll, you'll find um, available and are configured in the configuration file, of course. Um, those you can configure to be have different behaviours. Um, you can have they, you can set them up uh, so that they will you know fail gracefully um, certain requests. But these uh, these layers show that um, what I'm trying to kind of go across here is um, rather than have requests queuing up at multiple layers. Ideally, you have them queued up at the top so that you're not having lots of wasted grease of threads just spinning around, taking up the schedule of those resources. You're not consuming memory. There's no point having 500 bean instances if really you only need 40 or, or, or whatever, a small amount. So the requests, you, if you, when you're looking at the application server and the statistics which are coming out, um, the things which are waiting for other things to be to be done further down the stack, you really really want to have you really want to have your wait times at the top. All right, and things like the transaction manager or the JCA, which is the JMS, the data source uh, connection calling, that uh, ideally doesn't have a huge number of kind of huge amount of time being waited for. You know, those to be a, a pool in the connection in the connection pool. Uh, one of those connections to become available. So that, that's, that's my advice. Um, okay. So, systems that we have, the problems you need to consider, machines have finite resources, so we can't waste them. Companies are spending a lot of money in, in investing in the infrastructure. So if you start to make those um, more performance, then the company's going to get a bit of return. Um, so we've got situations where there's not only your application, it may be the most important application in the world to you, but there'll be other applications probably co-located on an application server or in a cluster. And all, uh, then there's also shared hosting systems. If you're not having a, a cluster, then you're going to be somebody will be hosting them on a uh, Tomcat system, which has got multiple applications. So the, we also have problems of greedy consumers. So the, the app, the, how your um, system operates and how much your application consumes of the resources, you need to cons carefully arc and construct um, how much, how it's going to work and make sure it doesn't run away. So, 
Examples of greedy, greedy consumers. So here, here's one. Now this, this is just to show you um, a photo of a um, motorway with traffic cones. And if you drive, you're, right, you're familiar with it. Now, of course, drivers on the road, if they were let loose, they would use all lanes of the, the road, okay? Except for the lay by yeah. But in a situation where you need um, to provide a safe environment, but that safe environment needs to be crafted and traffic cones allow make sure that those greedy consumers don't consume the whole road. That's that's the idea in this situation. So we need to throttle the traffic by taking one of the lanes away from this dual, in this dual carriageway. Um, the um, next greedy consumer I'm going to show you is 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 this one. Has anyone played this at all? Maybe a few years ago. I expect a few years ago. <laughs> good, good. No one's confessed to playing this uh, last night, are they? Um, this is a game for children. Uh, this is where the objective is to be as greedy as you can be and consume and gather the most uh, balls. Um, I think this must be a stroke of genius by somebody in the marketing department. Um, it's teaching children to be greedy consumers and, and later on in life they will be you know, good little consumers. I think that's... Uh... So those, those are, uh, that's one. And this is, this is another one. This is, um, this is back to what, more what we're used to looking at, which is code. Um, this will just um, chug away happily. Uh, consuming CPU resources and a bit of the memory bandwidth uh, and just yeah, and bring out to the console. Um, it's just a this example of a greedy consumer. I'm not wanting to pick on anyone. Um, I know I showed you the photo of the drivers, but it could be any road user, okay? It could be cyclists. <laughs> of which one might um, So, bottlenecks. Um, what are they? Uh, they are situations where you have not enough resources and there's demand um, further on when something depends on something else. Um, uh, there's just, uh, and those, the lack of those resources constrains just how much we can do and constricts uh, throughput. But can they be good? Well, they can be. Um, in the example of the road users, that's why I showed that photo is that constraining the traffic uh, is a good thing in that particular scenario. Um, so, to bring this into the context of the um, application server, um, recognising bottlenecks in the application server is um, pretty key um, for what we want to do uh, for profiling the system. There's the web tier, there's undertow, and on the different components in an application server, the, the, those, those components will have metrics, and the developers will have exposed metrics for those particular technologies. These are just a few of the different things you can expect to see in metrics, uh, uh, which Wildfire does provide. Controlling those those components, you'll be using the thread pools. Using the uh, implementation type and the size of those thread pools and the different attributes of those thread pools, um, you can control what's going to be happening. Being instance counts and, and, and pool size in the JCI, JCA as well can all be configured. So going back to this funnel again, using those different types of things we start to kind of craft what's going to be happening at each layer. There's been instance pools and um, those uh, thread, thread pool types. Additionally, um, we can use um, timeouts. Timeouts are quite useful. Um, I recommend using them in two different modes. One is on your environment, which uh, you want to start recognizing. Where in your system, you've got um, things are not being processed quickly enough. 
And so setting those timeouts quite low, they're going to time out and throw a stack trace. Quickly you start to see things kind of fill the logs and you get an idea of uh, what, what, what's not being processed quite as fast as you would have wished it. And of course in a live environment, you're not going to want to have those too, too short. Otherwise your system will start throwing, out, uh, throwing away requests which is, is not great. So you want to be a little more leaning into something a little higher. It depends on the situation, depends on what you're trying to achieve. And also the recovery manager, that will be a set of timeouts on that, so you can recognise deadlocks early on in the system. The default is something like 300 seconds, which is five minutes. That could be an eternity. And for a system not to completely grind to a halt, um, you may want to reduce that down. Depends on what you're trying to achieve. Depends on what the business wants to see happen uh, with user requests. So deadlocks in the application which you've written. You know, um, is the whole system going to be melting down? Or do you want it some of the, do you want those deadlocked um, database transactions to to kind of quickly recover and and the system kind of keeps partially working, well, until a period of time when you've got um, a solution um, ready for going live. But, but use those things to, to you, those are the things that are available to you. Okay. So we're just going to have a quick look at um, some of the um, threat rules for the first three, the unbounded, bounded, and um, blocking bounded. Um, look at the characteristics of each type. Um, and when to use them. Uh, it would be very useful to have um, the two gentlemen at the back um, chip in if they have any uh, uh, experience to share. That'd be great. Uh, uh, so go ahead and, and, and ask right there. Just uh, tell me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, because I don't get it. I don't get everything right. Um, the, the noise of hell. Um, unbounded. Uh, characteristics. Uh, this, uh, you're going to have uh, unknown latency, so you can have quite a wide range of latency uh, because things get you know, added to the queue and that's infinite and things just start piling up behind and the server will just work through these requests as fast as it can. So without some controls you're going to have just response times so that are going to eat on gate. Uh, so it, it can be adaptable to varying load, um, but it can cause out memory exceptions. Um, you can see here when to use it, it's, the latency is a, a low requirement or is not a you, you, you can adapt to, you know, you're going to response times. That's, that's a, a high, ideally high throughput. Uh, that would be quite suitable for that. Um, bounded. Bounded here is where you set the, the queue size, so you can prevent out of memory exceptions uh, by your request taking memory. Um, it's adaptable to demand, so well up to a certain point, um, uh, process requests quite efficiently, and then um, then they'll start queuing up. So you'll start, you'll have a curve of kind of things start to go up in terms of response time, but then it'll level off. Bounded. Um, some requests might fail you know, uh, when they type it, they can time out. It's good to use this when you need to have latency um, set as a priority, so that if you set it a small queue size, you're going to have requests be discarded, but any the ones which do go through, they're going to be responded to in a short period of time. Blocking bounded. Uh, reliable latency, um, if it's not overloaded, go up in surges, so it's fairly predictable, and it can be configured to um, prevent out of memory exceptions. That's enough um, thread pool uh, types. I, I started um, falling asleep at that point.
The, um, so we're going to try and um, do a demo here. I've, I've contrived a um, simple example uh, to demonstrate um, uh, a resource which is um, not getting enough resources, other you know, things like uh, database connections. So we're going to try and run that and we're going to see the, the tools that, uh, this, the failing tool that I talked about earlier on. So that we can see that in operation, see Wildfly working, and um, uh, this is a simple application which uh, I've been using uh, internally at Red Hat for performance profiling, um, Hibernate, and um, it does a very simple operation. There's two operations to it. Uh, there's creating orders and then there's viewing orders. So the benchmark driver is just hitting those uh, two web pages. Uh, it, it does that in. Yes, it should work. <laughs> okay, 